Hello, and welcome to this special report on the election of the next Pope. I'm Michael Miller. And I'm Rebecca Hasenauer. We'll be offering several reports in the coming days on the different aspects of a papal election. Today's report will focus on how a papal name is chosen. Up until the 6th century, a man who was elected Pope simply used his baptismal name as his papal name. It wasn't until the election of a man named Mercurius that st things started to change. You see, Mercurius had been named after the Roman god Mercury, and he thought it would not be right for a pope to be named after a Roman god. So, Mercurius decided that he would go by the name of John II. Some popes after John II followed in his footsteps, choosing a new name, while others still went with their baptismal name. It didn't really become a custom to choose a new name until the 10th century, although there were still some that went with their given name. However, the last pope to use his baptismal name was Pope Marcellus II in 1555. Every pope since the 16th century has stuck with the custom of taking a new name. The names chosen by popes can be based on immediate predecessors, mentors, political similarity, or even family members. In 1978, Cardinal Albino Luciani became the first pope to take a double name. He took the name John Paul I to honor his two immediate predecessors, Pope John XXIII and Paul VI. John Paul I also had the distinction of being the first pope in over a millennia to pick a name that had never been used since Pope Lando in the 10th century. After John Paul I died shortly following his election, Cardinal Carol Joseph Votiva was elected and wishing to continue what John Paul I had started, become the second pope to take a double name when he became John Paul II, as well as the second pope to be numbered anything less than the fourth, and the first to be numbered the second, in almost 430 years since Pope Marcellus II in 1555. It is often the case that a new pontiff's name choice is seen as a signal to the world of who he will emulate, what policies he will seek to enact, or even the length of his reign. Such is the case with Benedict XVI. It was speculated that he chose the name because he wished to emulate the last Pope Benedict, and to also call attention to the fact that it's seven and a half years that Benedict XV's reign was a relatively short one. Benedict XVI's own reign, which ended with his resignation on February 28, 2013, also lasted less than eight years. There's sort of an unwritten rule that one particular papal name is off limits, and that's the name of Peter. It's a tradition that only St. Peter should have that honor. In the 10th century, John XIV chose to use the name John because his given name was Peter. Some anti-popes did take the name of Peter II, but they are obviously not recognized by the Roman Catholic Church. On the topic of anti-popes, the name John XXIII was avoided for over five centuries because of the infamous anti-pope John XXIII. That is, until the election of John XXIII. After John's election as Pope in 1958, some wondered whether he would go by John XXIII or John XXIV. We obviously know how that one ended. After the new Holy Father has been elected, the Dean of the College of Cardinals will ask the newly elected Pope if he accepts the position, and then poses the question, by what name shall you be called? After his response, the senior cardinal deacon, or cardinal protodeacon, then appears on the papal balcony of St. Peter's to proclaim the new pope, announcing to the Catholic world its new holy father, and by what name they will know him. Stay tuned in the coming days for more reports on the process of electing a new pope. Thanks for tuning in today. Make sure to keep the future pope in your prayers. And may God bless you.